Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Hare Krishna Hare Bhum Today is the most beautiful topic Worshipping Govardhana Hill While engaged with the Brahmanas who were too much involved in the performance of Vedic sacrifices Krishna and Balrama also saw that the Kauhad men were preparing a similar sacrifice in order to pacify Indra the king of heaven who is responsible for supplying water As stated in the Chaitanya Charitamrita a devotee of Krishna has strong and firm faith in the understanding that if he is simply engaged in Krishna consciousness and Krishna's transcendental loving service then he is freed from all other obligations a pure devotee of Lord Krishna doesn't have to perform any of the ritualistic functions enjoined in the Vedas nor is he required to worship any demigods. Being a devotee of Lord Krishna, one is understood to have performed all kinds of Vedic rituals and all kinds of worship to demigods. One does not develop devotional service for Krishna by performing the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies or worshipping the demigods but it should be understood that one who is engaged fully in the service of the lord has already fulfilled all vedic injunctions in order to stop all the activities by his devotees krishna wanted to firmly establish exclusive devotional service during his presence in vrindavana because he is the omniscient personality of godhead krishna knew that the cowherd men were preparing for the indra sacrifice but as a matter of etiquette he began to inquire with great honor and submission from elder personalities like maharaja nanda krishna asked his father my dear father what is this arrangement going on for a great sacrifice what is the result of such a sacrifice and for whom is it meant How is it performed? Will you kindly let me know? I am very eager to know this. This procedure, so please explain to me the purpose of this sacrifice. Upon this inquiry, his father Nanda Maharaja remained silent, thinking that his young boy would not be able to understand the intricacies of performing the yajna. Krishna, however, persisted. My dear father for those who are liberal and saintly there is no secrecy they do not think anyone to be a friend an enemy or a neutral party because they are always open to everyone and even for those who are not so liberal nothing should be kept secret from the family members and friends although secrecy may be maintained for persons who are inimical Therefore you cannot keep any secrets from me all persons are engaged in fruitive activities some know what these activities are and they know the result and some execute activities without knowing the purpose or the result a person who acts with full knowledge gets the full result one who acts without knowledge does not get such a perfect result therefore please let me know the purpose of the sacrifice you are going to perform is it according to vedic injunction or is it simply a popular ceremony kindly let me know in detail about the sacrifice on hearing this enquiry from krishna maharaja nanda replied my dear boy this ceremonial performance is more or less traditional because rainfall is due to the mercy of king indra and the clouds are his representatives and because water is so important for our living we must show some gratitude to the controller of this rainfall maharaja indra we are arranging therefore to pacify king indra because he has very kindly sent us clouds to pour down a sufficient quantity of rain for successful agricultural activities water is very important without rainfall we cannot farm or produce grain and without grain we cannot live therefore rain is necessary for successful religious ceremonies economic development and ultimately liberation 
so we should not give up this traditional ceremonial function if one gives it up being influenced by lust greed or fear then it does not look very good for him after hearing this krishna the supreme personality of god and in the presence of his father and all elderly cowherd men of vrindavana spoke in such a way as to make the heavenly king indra very angry he suggested that they forgo the sacrifice his reasons for discouraging the sacrifice performed to please indra were twofold first as stated in the bhagavad gita there is no need to worship the demi god for any material advancement all results derived from worshiping the demi gods are simply temporary and only those who are less intelligent are interested in temporary results second whatever temporary result one derives from worshiping the demi gods is actually granted by the permission of the supreme personality of god It is clearly stated in the Bhagavad Gita Mayava vihitan hitan whatever benefit is supposed to be derived from the demigods is actually bestowed by the supreme personality of godhead without the permission of the supreme personality of godhead one cannot bestow any benefit upon others but sometimes the demigods become puffed up by the influence of material nature thinking themselves all in all they forget the supremacy of the personality of god it in shrimad bhagavatam it is clearly stated that in this instance krishna wanted to make the king indra angry krishna's advent was especially meant for the annihilation of the demons and protection of the devotees king indra was certainly a devotee not a demon but because he was puffed up krishna wanted to teach him a lesson He first made Indra angry by stopping the Indra puja which had been arranged by the cowherd men in Vrindavan. With this purpose in mind Krishna began to talk as if he were an atheist supporting the philosophy of karma mimamsa. Advocates of this philosophy do not accept the supreme authority of the personality of Godhead. They put forward the argument that if anyone works nicely the result is sure to come. Their opinion is that even if there's god who gives man the result of his fruitive activities there is no need to worship him because unless man works he cannot bestow any good result. They say that instead of worshiping a demi god or god people should give attention to their own duties and that's the good result will surely come lord krishna began to speak to his father according to these principles of the karma mimamsa philosophy my dear father he said i don't think you need to worship any demi gods for the successful performance of your agricultural activities every living being is born according to his past karma and lives his life simply taking the result of the present karma everyone is born in different types of or species of life according to his past activities and he gets his next birth according to the activities of this life different grades of material happiness and distress comforts and disadvantages of life are different results of different kinds of activities from either the past or present life Maharaja Nanda and other elder members argued that without satisfying the predominating god one cannot derive any good results simply by material activities this is actually the fact for example it is sometimes found that in spite of first class medical help and treatment by a first class physician a deceased person dies It is concluded therefore that first class medical treatment or attempts of a first class physician are not in themselves the cause for curing a patient there must be the hand of supreme personality of god it similarly a fathers and mothers taking care of their children is not cause of children's comfort sometimes it is found that in spite of all the care by the parents the children go bad or succumb to death Therefore material causes are not sufficient for the results there must be 
sanction of the supreme personality of god nand maharaja therefore advocated that in order to get good results for agricultural activities they must satisfy indra the superintending deity of the rain supply Lord Krishna nullified this argument saying that the demigods give results only to persons who have executed their prescribed duties the demigods cannot give any good results to the person who has not executed the prescribed duties therefore demigods are dependent on the execution of duties and are not absolute in awarding good results to anyone so why should one care about them My dear father Lord Krishna said there is no need to worship the demigod Indra everyone has to achieve the result of his own work we can actually see the one becomes busy according to the natural tendency of his work and according to that natural tendency of all living entities whether human beings or demigods achieve their respective results all living entities achieve higher or lower bodies and create enemies friends or neutral parties only because of their different kinds of work one should be careful to discharge duties according to his natural instinct and not divert attention to the worship of various demigods the demigods will be satisfied by proper execution of all duties so there is no need to worship them let us rather perform our prescribed duties very nicely actually one cannot be happy without executing his proper prescribed duty one who does not therefore properly discharge his prescribed duties is compared to an unchaste wife the proper prescribed duty of the brahmanas is the study of vedas The proper duty of a royal order the kshatriyas is engagement in protecting the citizens the proper duty of vaishya community is agriculture trade and protection of the cows and the proper duty of the shudras is service to the higher classes namely the brahmanas kshatriyas and vaishyas we belong to the vaishya community and our proper duty is to form trade agricultural procedure and protect cows or take to banking krishna identified himself with the vaishya community because nanda maharaja was protecting many cows and krishna was taking care of them he enumerated four kinds of business engagement for the vaishya community namely agricultural trade protection of cows and banking although the vaishyas can take to any of this occupations the men of vrindavan now were engaged primarily in the protection of cows krishna further explained to his father the cosmic manifestation is going on under the influence of three modes of material nature goodness passion and ignorance these three these three modes are the cause of creation maintenance and destruction the cloud is caused by the action of mode of passion therefore It is a mode of passion which causes the rainfall and after the rainfall the living entities derive the result success in agricultural work what then has indra to do with this affair even if you do not please indra what can he do we do not derive any special benefit from indra even if he is there he pours water on the ocean also where there is no need of water so he is pouring water on the ocean or on the land it does not depend on our worshiping him as village or foreign country there are palatial buildings in the cities but we are satisfied living in the forest of vrindavana our specific relationship is with govardhana hill and vrindavana forest and nothing more I therefore request you my dear father to begin a sacrifice which will satisfy the local brahmanas and govardhana hill and let us have nothing to do with indra after hearing this statement by krishna anand maharaja replied my dear boys since you are asking i shall arrange for a separate sacrifice for the local brahmanas and govardhana hill but for the present let me execute the sacrifice known as indra yagna 
But Krishna replied, "My dear father, don't delay. The sacrifice you propose for Govardhana and the local brahmanas will take much time. Better take the arrangement and paraphernalia you have already made for the Indra Yagna and immediately engage them to satisfy Govardhana Hill and the local brahmanas." Maharaja Nanda finally relented. The cowherd men then inquired from Krishna. how he wanted the agnya performed and krishna gave them the following directions prepare very nice foods of all descriptions from the grain and ghee collected for the agnya prepare rice dal then halwa pakora puri and all kinds of milk preparations such as sweet rice rabri sweet balls sandesha rasgulla and laddu and invite the learn, learned brahmanas who can chant the vedic hymns and offer oblations to the fire the brahmanas should be given all kinds of grains in charity then decorate all the cows and feed them well after performing this gift money in charity to the brahmanas as far as the lower animals are concerned such as the dogs and the lower grades of people such as chandalas or the fifth class of men were considered untouchable they also may be given sumptuous prasadam after nice grasses have been given to the cows the sacrifice known as govardhana puja may immediately begin this sacrifice will very much satisfy me. in this statement lord krishna practically descri- described the whole economy of the vaishya community in all communities and human society including brahmanas kshatriyas vaishyas shudras and chandalas etc and in the animal kingdom including the cow dogs goats etc everyone has his part to play each is to work in cooperation for the total benefit of all society which includes not only animate objects but also inanimate objects like hills and land the vaishya community is specifically responsible for the economic improvement of the society by producing gains by giving protection to the cows by transporting food when needed and by banking and finance from this statement we learn also that although the cats and dogs which have now become so important are not to be neglected cow protection is actually more important than protection of cats and dogs Another hint we get from this statement is that the chandalas or the untouchables are also not to be neglected by the higher classes and should be given necessary protection everyone is important but some are directly responsible for the advancement of the human society and some are only indirectly responsible however when krishna consciousness is there then everyone is total benefit is taken care of the sacrifice known as govardhana puja is observed in the krishna consciousness movement lord chaitanya has recommended that since krishna is worshipable so his land vrindavana and govardhana hill is also worshipable to confirm this statement lord krishna said that govardhana puja is as good as worship of him from that day govardhana puja has been going on and is known as Annakuta in all the temples of Vrindavana or outside of Vrindavana huge quantities of food are prepared in the ceremony and are very sumptuously distributed to the general population sometimes the food is thrown to the crowds and they enjoy collecting it off the ground from this we can understand that prasadam offered to krishna never becomes polluted or contaminated even if it is thrown on the ground the people therefore collect and eat it with great satisfaction the supreme personality of godhead krishna thus advised the cowherd men to stop the indra yagna and begin the govardhana puja in order to chastise indra who was very much puffed up at being the supreme controller of the heavenly planets the honest and simple cowherd men headed by nanda maharaja accepted krishna's proposal and executed in detail everything he advised they performed govardhana worship and circumambulation of the hill 
Following the inauguration of Govardhana Puja, people in Vrindavana still dressed nicely and assembled near Govardhana Hill to offer worship and circulate the hill, leading their cows of all around, according to the instruction of Lord Krishna. Nanda Maharaja and the cowherd men called in learned, learned Brahmanas and began to worship Govardhana Hill by chanting Vedic hymns and offering prasadam. The inhabitants of Vrindavana assembled together, decorated their cows and gave them grass. Keeping the cows in front, they began to circumvallate Govardhana Hill. The gopis dressed themselves very luxuriantly and sat in bull-driven carts chanting the glories of Krishna pastimes. The brahmanas assembled there to act as pleased for Govardhana Puja offered their blessings to the cowherd men and their wives, the gopis. When everything was complete, Krishna assumed a great transcendental form and declared to the inhabitants of Vrindavana that he was himself Govardhana Hill and in order to convince the devotees that Govardhana Hill and Krishna himself are identical, then Krishna began to eat all the foods offered there. The identity of Krishna and Govardhana Hill is still honored and great devotees take rocks from Govardhana Hill and worship them exactly as they worship the deity of Krishna in the temple. The followers of the Krishna Consciousness Movement may therefore collect small rocks or pebbles from Govardhana Hill and worship them at home because this worship is as good as deity worship. The form of Krishna who began to eat the offering was separately constituted and Krishna himself along with the other inhabitants of Vrindavana offered obeisance to the deity as well as the Govardhana hill. In offering obeisance to the huge form of Krishna and Govardhana hill, Krishna declared, just see how Govardhana hill has assumed this huge form and is favoring us by accepting all the offerings. Krishna also declared at the meeting, one who neglects the worship of Govardhana Puja, as I am personally conducting it, will not be happy. There are many snakes on Govardhana Hill and the persons neglecting the prescribed duty of Govardhana Puja will be bitten by these snakes and killed. In order to assure the good fortune of the cows and themselves, all people of Vrindavana near Govardhana must worship the hill as prescribed by me. Thus performing the Govardhana Puja sacrifice, all the inhabitants of Vrindavana followed the instructions of Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, and afterwards they returned to their respective homes. Thus ends this beautiful chapter, Worshipping Govardhana Hill. And what is the outcome will be seen in the next chapter. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. In divine service, this is Lakshmi Srinivasan. Bow to the Supreme, peace be with all. Jai Sri Krishna.